Y'all may be seated as I came. Your Romeo Yisrael, y'all. Come forth. Hallelujah. We must trust in Yahweh's hands. The hands of Yahweh never changes. Hallelujah. His Torah never changes. We must bata. We must trust in Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. What a fitting song for tonight because that's the topic I want to touch on tonight. Trust. Trust in Yahweh. Our confidence in him. I know I have been speaking upon the shaking of the wilderness of Almighty Yahweh. And we have dabbed somewhat in Eo concerning his troubles, what he went through. But we must understand whom we trust in. Our bata, Who we depend on. When man designs certain machines, automobiles, they have to put what is somewhat called a trust factor, safety, safety equipment, to make the equipment safer and more pliable to use. Seat belts, the anti-lock braking systems, and when you're getting your fit in those vehicles, you put your trust in that, don't you? I know I do. I want the brakes to work and to work properly. But we must put our bow tie, we must put our trust and what Yahweh Almighty is doing in this hour. As we are traveling down the highway that is straight and narrow, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. We must depend on the word of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. That we know when to put on the brakes. Yeah. That we know when to accelerate. Yeah. When you get in the vehicle, one thing I cannot stand in the vehicle, the vehicle doesn't have any power. Yeah. I like to have horsepower. Yeah. When I put my foot to the pedal to accelerate, I want it to accelerate. Yeah. Hallelujah. So is it in Almighty Yahweh? We need to accelerate, Yisrael. But we're not going to be able to accelerate in the rate that Yahweh desires us to if we do not bota, if we don't trust in him, if we don't have confidence in what he's doing, our situations, our circumstances. We talk about that often, do we not? Trials and tribulations. What's the purpose of it? What is the intent of it? Eo, he questioned himself. The Torah said that he even complained. But it wasn't a type of loom or murmuring. It, it caused him to search deeply. Even though he cursed even his birth. Hallelujah. Even his flesh and the defilement of it. Yet he understood. And he had to know. He had to have his batak. And more than just his physical man. Because our physical person. Our personalities. Our flesh. Our moods. They do not last. They forsake us. They're not trustworthy. Hallelujah. But the Torah, the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, we can safely, Yisrael, safely put our trust in Almighty Yahweh and in his Hashem, in his name, Yisrael. So let us stand on a mitzvah. Let us but talk in Almighty Yahweh tonight. Hallelujah. I do want to start by reading an account in Yashar chapter 11, verse 29. Whom do we trust in, Yisrael? Do we trust in the works of the flesh? Do we trust in the gods of the world? Do we trust in our bricks, wood, stone? Those are the types of things that man put their trust in. They put their batak in. But yet, even in this situation, as I'm about to read in Yasha, when we are confronted with the issue of these things actually, what strength they take in our lives, mm -hmm. we can actually see the foolishness of it. Hallelujah. 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 And we're not able to see the foolishness and the things that we partake in and that we trust in, besides Almighty Yahweh, then our walk in Yahshua HaMashiach is vain. Mm -hmm. It is vain, Israel. Because the things that we experience that we see in this life, Israel, y'all, they're just temporal. So we need to put our talk, our trust in things that are more than what we see that are temporal, Israel, y'all. We must have something more tangible that we can hold on to, that doesn't perish, that doesn't rust, that doesn't break, and that doesn't fail us, Israel, y'all. Hallelujah. 
The machines that man put together, they fail us. The Torah talk about the evil devices of man. Yeah. And we see evil devices all over the world. Yeah. But they should fail. They put their strength in their chariots and in their horses, but it should fail them, Yisrael. Yeah. But we as Yisrael, yeah, we put our bata yeah. in Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. So let us begin here. I don't plan to be before us long, Yisrael, yeah, but I do want us to um, depend on Almighty Yahweh. Just think of this message tonight as just, if I may say, a sweet taste in your mouth, a piece of peppermint. Sometimes it's, it's not the full course meal, sometimes it are laid out, but sometimes it's just the simple things. The children, they delight in simple things, a little piece of candy. Come on, Israel, y'all. A little piece of hard candy, you, you, if you don't save it, it doesn't last long, but yet the taste and the sweetness of it, you don't forget it, Israel, y'all. Hallelujah. So let me give us a taste of something sweet tonight. Isn't Yahshua sweet? Hallelujah. He's sweet, I know. Yahshua chapter 11, verse 29, as I begin reading. And Abram, he took the savory meat from his mother, and he brought it before his father's gods into the chamber. What are gods, Israel? It's what we exalt above the power, and the name of Almighty Yahweh. That's a God. Anything. That's what it is. You're a God. Your things could be gods. And he came nigh to them that, that they might eat. Talking about the gods. Talk about things that don't have any life. They don't breathe. They don't think. You just think about the things we put our batak, our trust in. They don't do anything for us, just right, y'all. They cause us more heartache, more pain. They fail us. Hallelujah. And he placed it before them, and Abram sat before them all that day. And he pondered, thinking, perhaps, that they might eat. And Abram, he viewed them. And behold, they had neither voice nor hearing, nor did one of them stretch forth his hands to the meat. To eat. That's what we do, Yisrael. We set the essence of our nephesh before things that do not have any life. We set the strength of what Yah has placed in us, and He placed it in us to what? To give back unto Him our Torah, our praise, our breath, the works of our hands, not to things that do not speak. I do not comprehend, yes. but yet we do it constantly. Yes. The Hindus do it yes. before their gods. Yes, they set flowers and incenses and fragrances and food. Yes. They spend thousands upon millions of dollars a year well, to place idols before these statues mm -hmm. and these gods. Sure. And what does it do? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. It's just like the flesh of man, our works, they're nothing. They're nothing before Almighty Yahweh without the Ruach of Yahshua, Hamashiach, Yisrael. Let me move on. And they had neither voice nor hearing, nor did one of them stretch forth his hands to the meat to eat. And in the evening of that day in that house, Abram was clothed with the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. We need to be clothed tonight, Yisrael. We need to be clothed with the Ruach. Did you not hear that? Yes. What time was it? Was it in the evening? Are we not in the evening time, Israel? Are we not in the night season, the dark season? We need to be clothed with the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 32. And he called out and said, Woe to my father, to my Avat, the one that has brought me forth. And he said, And this wicked generation. You see what the Ruach of Yahweh will do? It will give us even the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. We'll move in the Ruach HaKodesh. We will express the wrath of Almighty Yahweh for these things, Yisrael, that we have spent so much time, so much strength and essence of our very lives, Yisrael, towards what? Nothing. Towards nothing. Wicked generation. It says, whose 
Netfish, the lambs, are all inclined to vanity. It's all vanity, Israel. It's all vanity. What we aspire to do, college educations, wealth, bigger homes, more fancy cars. Is that amongst the house of Israel? Sure it is. We strive for the things that do not feed our nephesh, Yisrael. It's all vanity. And he says, woe unto them, curse this wicked generation who serve these idols of wood and of stone, which can neither eat, smell, hear, nor speak. Who have mouths without speech, eyes without sight. Ears without hearing, hands without feeling, and legs which cannot move. Like them are those that made them and that trust in them. Did you not hear that, Israel? They do not move. They have eyes. They have ears. Noses. They cannot smell. They have arms and legs and cannot move them. And he even liked it unto those that worship. Those that bow down unto the idols. Those that bow down unto the gods, Yisrael. That's what we are. If we do not continue in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Is not Almighty Yahweh a Hava? Is he not life? Has he not breathed in us his Ruach? Hallelujah. Well, we should worship Almighty Yahweh, the maker of all things. Not our flesh. It doesn't bring forth life. It only brings forth death. We worship things of wood and of stone, Israel, that have no life. Why do you think that happens? Why do you think Israel, when they traversed out of Mizraim, built a golden calf? Because that was the thing, that was the essence of the thing that was in their life, Israel. They, they, it just showed what they were, beasts, a beastly nature. So if we find ourselves worshiping the flesh, it don't matter if it's your Emma. You put them before Almighty Yahweh, yes. your avat, your father, your children, your grandchildren. Yes. They were walking in sin yes. without the rock of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Running toward hell. Yes. But yet we worship them. Yes. You do that because you're just like they are. Yes. I'm going to read that again. Let me read that again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Who have mouths without speech, eyes without sight. Ears without hearing, hands without feeling, and legs which cannot move. And he says, like them are those that made them and that trust. They put their batak. They put their trust in them, Yisrael. Let us move on. Verse 33. This is what we must do as a people, Yisrael. We must destroy and impale the flesh. And those things that are not of Almighty Yahweh. Why? That we may move forward. That we may accelerate. That we may reach those higher heights, as the old condition would say, and the deeper depths in Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 33. When Abram saw all these things, it says that his ass, his anger, his anger was kindled against his father. And he hastened. And took a hatchet in his hand and came to the chamber of the gods, of these idols, yeah. these figures. And he broke all of his father's gods. He destroyed all those things that he brought his offerings to. And the meat offerings, the fat offerings. That only belongs to Yahweh, Yisrael. It's what did Abram do? We must move in that same Ruach of Abram. And the anger of Almighty Yahweh with his hot displeasure that we may destroy these things that are in our lives, Yisrael, that displease Almighty Yahweh. And when he had done breaking the images, when he was done, he placed the hatchet, he left one, in the hand of the great God, the bigger one. The one that received more of the offerings. It must have been the head of all the rest of them. And he went out, and Terah, his father, came home, for he had heard at the door the sound of striking of a hatchet. So Terah came into the house to know what this matter was about. 
And Terah, having heard the noise of the hatchet and the room of the images, ran into the room to the images and met Abram going out. Can you imagine that? I think it's Alva. He, he, had, he had to know something was going on. Because first of all, in the temple, that place that the gods were, he knew in himself they didn't move. He knew in themselves, in himself, that he could not speak and could not hear. Oh, I like that. Yeah, he wanted to go in the room and find out what in the world is going on here. Mm-hmm. Maybe one of them maybe moved a little bit of something, yeah. fell off the shelf. Hallelujah. And Terah entered the room and found all of the idols falling down and broken. Sure. And the hatchet in the hand, it says, of the largest one. Yes. We need to destroy those things, Israel, y'all. From the greatest to the smallest of the gods. From the things that we put before Almighty Yahweh uh, to the habits and the things that we cherish so much, Israel, that that is just vain. He says, it was in the hand of the largest one, which was not broken. And the savory meat, which Abraham his son had made, was still before them. Verse 37. And when Terah saw this, his anger was greatly kindled. Do we get mad when we're touched, when our gods are touched, Israel? When Yahweh sends the messenger with the fire from the Shemaiah to destroy the gods, the images we set up before him, Israel? And he hastened and went from the room to Abram. And he found Abram, his son, still sitting in the house. And he said unto him, now, we take these things as fables and cute stories. It, this happened. This is an account, Yisrael. We must take these things into account of our own lives day by day, Yisrael, and see the foolishness of the things that we do. Yes, Hallelujah. And he said to him, what is this work you have done to my gods? Yes. And Abram added to Terah his father and said, not so, my Lord, my mighty one, my Ava, you birthed me. Not so. For I brought savory meat before them, and when I came nigh to them with the meat that they might eat, they all at once stretched forth their hands to eat before the great one. Come on, Israel. That's what we do. That's the foolishness we do, Israel. That's what we do before the princes of Almighty Yahweh. And before the great one, and put forth his hand to eat. And the large one saw that there, saw their works that they did before him, and his anger was violently kindled amongst them. And he went and took the hatchet that was in the house, and came to them and broke them all. What is the purpose of this, Israel? There's a very distinct and an important purpose that we must understand in this entire circumstance, in this act, Israel, that he did. And behold, the hatch is yet in the hand as you see. Mm-hmm. And Terah anger was kindled against Abram, his son, when he spoke this. And Terah said unto Abram, his son, in his anger, what is this tale, this lie, this far-fetched thing that you have told? Yes. Now, now he, at this time, he was so clouded by his anger mm-hmm. that he did not, he saw what his son did. But yet his eyes was blinded from the purpose of what he did, Yisrael. When we move in this room, our eyes are blinded from the purpose, from the intent that Yahweh desires us to see, Yisrael. What we experience, what we go through, what we learn. Our walk before him, our talk before him, Yisrael. It must be real. It cannot be false, Yisrael. So even in this, his avat knew that that was not true. Why? Because the idols are dead. Yes. The things are dead, Yisrael. Mm-hmm. So why did he worship him? Them. Oh. Why do we worship those things that are dead without life, Yisrael? Oh. Hallelujah. Yes. You speak lies to me. Mm. What discernment? But yet he could not discern the wickedness of his own heart. Yes. As he went and bowed down before these gods. He taught Abram that, his sons, the whole house that followed. Yeah. These wicked things, Israel. Sure. We must not teach our children wicked things. Yes. Yeah. All the things that displease Almighty Yahweh. Mm-hmm. 
we must cleanse them. We must burn them. We must break them. How do we do that? It's only through the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh, that we can execute these things, Israel, and that we can profit in Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 42, he said, is there in these God's spirit, now this is the Ruach, this is the Father, so a power to do all that you have told me? He did not even see the, the, the wisdom in even what he was speaking, but yet he did not apply it to his life, Israel. He said, are they not wood and stone? Remember, this is the Avat. This is not Abram. This is the Avat reproving and rebuking Abram for the lie. And have I not myself, listen to this, sure. made them. Yes. We make them. Yes. We make the gods. Yes. We make those things more important to Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Yes. We make our family more important to Almighty Yahweh. Yes. We make those that do not walk after the Torah more important to Almighty yes. Yahweh. We make what we consume in our flesh mm-hmm. more important to Almighty Yahweh. Things more important than Almighty Yahweh. Our time more important than the time we should be putting before Almighty Yahweh Israel. He said, have I not myself made them? And can you speak such lies? How can you speak such lies? Abram. Saying that the large one, the large God that was with them smote them. It is you that did place the hatchet in the hands and then slay and then say that he was the one that smote them all. Yes. You see this discernment of the father? He's seen even the foolishness of what Abram was saying. Now listen to this. And Abram answered his father and said to him, see, we don't think this is a hava. We don't think this is love, Yisrael. When Yahweh, he breaks those things that we think are, are, are higher than him. When he takes certain things from us. Did not Eob, did he not say that Yahweh, he provided? Yeah. Yahweh, he gives? Yeah. Did not Eob have much? Yeah. And he said that he knew it was Yahweh that took those things from him, Yisrael. Yeah. We need to hear the Ruach tonight, Yisrael. Yeah. And it's Yahweh, he knows what he is doing mm-hmm. when he gives. And he knows what he is doing when he takes from us, Yisrael. Yeah. And how can you then serve these idols? Abram answered his avat, in whom there is no power to do anything. Can those idols in which you trust, that you put your batak in, your confidence, your lives, in the hands of these guys, that you trust, can they deliver you? Can they bring you out of trouble? Can anything deliver us, Yisrael, besides Almighty Yahweh, besides Yahshua HaMashiach? And the dom that he has shed for us, Yisraya, we need to put our batak in him, Yisraya. Put our batak in the, the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. And even put our batak in what we experience and what we go through, that they are, all, they are of Almighty Yahweh. And he has placed things before us, Yisraya, to strengthen us. And that we may experience and overcome and move on, Yisraya. He said, can they hear your prayers when you call upon them? Can they deliver you from the hands of your enemies? Who has delivered us from the hands of our enemies, Israel? Hallelujah. Or will they fight your battles? Don't you know Yahweh, he fights our battles, Israel? In the midst of the most diverse circumstances, Yahweh, he fights our battles, Israel. But I can't sit around me, I seem like I'm all by myself because you look at, you're looking at it in the wrong angle, Israel. We're looking at it through the realm of the flesh. And not from what Yahweh teaches us, Yisrael. He said, well, they fight your battles for you against your enemies. That you should serve wood and stone, which can neither speak nor hear. He said, and now surely it is not tough, it is not good for you, nor for the sons of men, that they are connected with you. But you know, we will connect with those. When we uh, count those that despise Almighty Yahweh, that do such things, Israel. We do not cut these things out of our lives. We do not cut the persons out of our lives, Israel. Don't you know that we are partakers of that and their sin and their iniquity and those filthy things, Israel? 
He says, the sons of men that are connected with you to do these things. Yes. And he says this. Are you so silly? Are we so silly, Israel? Yeah? He says, are we so foolish? Yes, or so short of understanding. This is the house. This is us. This is me, this is you, Yisrael, that you will serve wood stones and do after this manner. It's what we do, Yisrael, day in and day out. So what should we do after this knowledge? For what we hear tonight, Yisrael, we must shoo, we must turn, we must break those idols, we must break the gods. Those things that place our time before Almighty Yahweh, our polar unto Almighty Yahweh, we must... Break those things. We must destroy them, Israel. Verse 45. He said, how can you do these things after this manner? And what? Forget. Yes. Forget. We forget Almighty Yahweh. Yes, we forget what Yahweh has done for us. Yes. We forget where Yahweh, Almighty Yahweh, has brought us from. Yes. We forget the Dharma of Yahshua HaMashiach yes. that has cleansed us and that continually purges us, Israel. Yes. His Dharma, it still flows to this day. Yes. The blood must still flow through these vessels to purge and to cleanse Israel. So must the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, but yet we forget. Hallelujah. I will hear, I recall hearing even my Ava in the old conditions back in the day. Sometimes you have to go back and, and remember and think what Yahweh has brought us from, Israel. We must be reminded, Israel. And forget Yahweh, the Almighty. He's only one. There's only one Yahweh. There's only one Almighty One. There's only one that could deliver, one that could fight for you. And forget Yahweh, the Almighty, who had made the Shemayims, the earth, the heavens, the earth, and who created you in the earth, and thereby bringing a great evil upon your souls in this matter by serving stone and wood. How can we do that, Israel? Don't you know we bring great curses? Damnation, separation from Almighty Yahweh, when we encounter and when we try to add these things in this walk, in this straight and narrow way, this extra baggage, it's not going to work, Yisrael. We must drop it off. We must break it. We must destroy it. We, can't, we cannot move on with these things weighing us down, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So let us do what Yahweh commands us to do. Daily. Every second. Casting out those thoughts, those things that do not please Almighty Yahweh, those things that do not line upon Torah. Hallelujah. We must forsake those things, Israel. We cannot be partakers of the gods or those that worship or serve gods in this manner, Israel. It's not of Almighty Yahweh. It displeases. It brings the anger of Almighty Yahweh. Did we not read about the anger that was in Abram when the Ruach moved upon him and his eyes were open, Israel? We must do the same. We must be angry with ourselves and what we do every day, Israel. Hallelujah. That's why we're in the state that we are in. That's why we cannot move beyond these stumbling blocks, these gods, Israel. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he desires to look upon us and see a people that are progressing. We should see progression in our everyday lives, Israel. Sure, it may be me old, it may be little, but progression. We must move on. We do not have the time that we had years ago, that Israel had in, in past times, Israel. The time is short and is at hand. So we must be serious about the hour that we end, Israel, and not waste any more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us move on to 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 1. We're still talking about Batak tonight, Israel. We put our faith and our trust in things that do not last. And his foolishness. Did not we see the foolishness in the father of Abram, Israel? Do we not see the foolishness in the things that we do? If you search yourself, bring things in perspective of the Torah, will we see our foolishness? How silly we are, Israel. Hallelujah. It says in Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1. And Dawid, he spoke unto Yahweh the words of this song and the day that Yahweh had delivered him. 
Did he know that it was Yahweh that delivered? He knew it wasn't by the strength of his own hands or the kingdom or even the power that he had at his disposal. He knew that it was Almighty Yahweh. Had delivered him out of the hand of Kol, all of his enemies. And out of the hand of Saul. And he said, Yahweh, he is my rock. Do we not hear or remember about the rock on past Shabbat Yisrael, the stone? Yahweh, he is my rock and my fortress. He surrounds me. His mishvah encamps about me. It is my hedge. Just as that which protected Eo from Satan and from his enemies, Yisrael. He said, Yahweh, he is my fortress and he is my deliverer. He said, the Almighty One of my rock, my strength, my sure foundation. He says, in him will I balta. In him will I trust. In him will I put my confidence. Not in the strength of horses, not in wealth, but in his promises, in his mishvah, in his Torah. He said, I will trust in him. He said, he is my shield. What does a shield do? What does a shield do? It protects you from moving objects, things that are impelled at you. When they hit that shield, they bounce off. They cannot harm you. Hallelujah. But we must have the shield. Yahweh, he says, is my shield. And the horn, he is the horn of my salvation, of my Yahshua. But you know, Yahshua is our horn, Yisrael, Yah, of our salvation, of our Yahshua. He says... Not only my tower, but my high tower. Hallelujah. The name of Yahweh it is a strong and a mighty tower. It is a high tower. Torah says that the Siddiq, the righteous, they run there. They run at Yahshua HaMashiach. And they are Yahshua, they are saved, they are preserved. He says, here is my high tower. What is a high tower used for, Yisrael? What is the purpose of a tower? It's to elevate you. That you may see the surrounding plains and the surrounding areas. There has to be a watchman continually in the tower. That he may see what is approaching the city. Hallelujah. So he said that Yahweh, you are my high tower. You lift me up that I might see. He said, and you are my refuge. He said, you are my savior. Hallelujah. He says, and you save me from what? From violence. It is Yahweh that saves us from violence. It is Yahweh that keeps us from being consumed, Yisrael. He says, I will call on Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised. Do we call upon him, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Let us call upon the name of Yahweh, because he is worthy to be praised. Here's our protection. He has kept us, Yisrael. He says, so shall I be saved from my enemies, those that pursue me, those that seek my life, those that try to bring me down, snuff me out. Take the life from me, Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 5. He said, when the waves of death come past me. And we, how, how many of us have experienced the waves of death, Yisrael? It is Yahweh that brings us out of death, out of those ways of death. And out of the pit, Yisrael. He said, when the ways of death come past me, the floods of the wicked men, they made me afraid. I found out how little strength I had in myself. Verse 6. The sorrows of hell come past me about, and the snares of death, they prevented me. They stopped me. It slowed me down from pursuing or from moving on. But he says, but in my distress, I call upon Almighty Yahweh. Why, would you, why should we call upon anyone else? Why should we call upon the strength of our flesh? Hallelujah. Why should we call upon anyone else or anything besides Almighty Yahweh? He said, in my distress, in my fear, in the anguish of my nephesh. Even Eo talked about that. He expressed that. 
the anguish of his nephesh. He said, I call upon Yahweh. And I cried unto my Abba. Yes. Not just my creator. Yes. I know that he has made the earth, the old element, and everything. He has placed kings in, 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 in their places and in their power. But yet he is my Abba. He has birthed me. I have been birthed of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. I have been washed in the Dharma of Yahshua HaMashiach. I know I have my place in his purpose. He said, I had cried unto my Abba. It's not like crying unto your Abba. Yes, yes. Unto an Abba, unto a Abba. One that cares. That watches over you. Hallelujah. It's him we should put our bataki in Yisrael. And he did. We know he will, but he did. He does. He do. He delivers. And he did hear my voice out of his great tabernacle. And my cry did enter into his ears. I want my cries to enter into the ears of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I don't want to allow the enemy of my, of my mind and of my flesh, the hidden man of my left, Keep me from crying out unto my Abba. We need to impale that man every day, Israel. Hallelujah. That we may be free to worship, to honor Almighty Yahweh. And no matter what we go through, the things we go through are just small things, Israel. It's not to be compared to the things that Yahweh has in store for us. It's worth it all, Israel. Hallelujah. Even in Eo, the first and second chapters, it talked about how even he went through all those things, but yet he did not sin with his feb with his mouth, nor did he charge Yahweh foolishly with his tongue. And even after it was all said and done, yet he still offered praises unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's continually offer the praise offering that is due unto Almighty Yahweh, because he is worthy, Israel. Hallelujah. He said, you are my fortress and my deliverer. Verse 3, the almighty one of my rock. In him do I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my Yasha. My high tower and my refuge, my savior. You saved me from violence. Let us move down, Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Verse 20. I'm sorry. Verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 7. Verse 7, in my distress, I called upon Yahweh, and I cried to my Abba, and he did hear my voice out of his great tabernacle. And in my cry, my cry did enter his ears. That's what we want, Yisrael. Yeah. We don't want our palah and our prayers to fall upon deaf ears. Hallelujah. Many times our ears are shut, even unto our, ark, unto our hope, Yisrael. Our ears should be open unto the cries of Yisrael. We should pray for one another continuously, Israel. Turn with me to 1 Chronicles. 1 Debrahim, chapter 5, verse 18. We must put our pala, our imuna, our faith, our substance, Israel, into Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. It says in 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 1. And Dawi, he spoke. Hallelujah. My fault, Israel. Debraham, 1 Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 18. Debraham, chapter 1. 1 Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 18. It says in verse 18 that the sons of Reuben and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh of violent men, these are warriors, men able to bear buckler and sword and shoot with bow and skillful in war were four and forty thousand. 760 that went out to the war. That's a lot of men, isn't it, Israel? But don't you know, without the leading of Almighty Yahweh, 
no matter the numbers, no matter how strong we think we are, Yisrael, how much wisdom we think we have, without the rock of Almighty Yahweh leading us, it is all vanity. It's all vanity, Israel. Verse 19. And they did war with the Haggai's, with Jetur, and Nephish, and Noab. Verse 20. And they were helped against them, and the Haggai's were delivered into their hands, and all that were with them. Why? Before they did cry unto Almighty Yahweh in the battle. Do we cry on the Almighty Yahweh in the battle? Yeah. Where things seem tough? We think we are strong in our own power and our own strength, but we're not Israel. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with us declaring that we are weak, for in that we shall declare that we are strong. And Yahshua HaMashiach. For they cried unto Almighty Yahweh in battle, and he was entreated of them because they put their trust. It wasn't the number of the men. It wasn't the strength of the men. It's because they put their trust in Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. We must put our trust in Almighty Yahweh. We must put our confidence in Him. We must bring all of our problems, our circumstances, and lay it all at the feet of Yahshua HaMashiach. Let you know here's our Shabbat. We rest in Him, Yisrael. While I'm troubled, Zakay, we must rest. And Yahshua, here's our Shabbat. Here's our hiding place. We should not bring anything into him, Yisrael, that is a burden. He has carried it all for us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let's move on. We're talking about trusting by top in Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Eo. Chapter 13, verse 15. Eob had a few things to say about trusting in Almighty Yahweh. Even though his friends were there, they sat with him. Sometimes, even not knowing what to say. Seeing him in his pains and his agonies with the bulls upon his body, Israel. Yet, there had to be something beyond that. Beyond what was seen. There had to be a strength to rise up out of us, Yisrael, in our circumstances. And that is the strength of Almighty Yahweh putting our trust in him. He says in chapter 13 of Eo, verse 15, he says, though he slay me, though he brings me down to the edge of death, to where I want to give up, that I prefer death over life. Though he slay me, yet will I bata. I will trust in him. And he says this, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Was it the ways of Yah that Eo was maintaining? Was it the confidence of Almighty Yahweh? We must be take, maintain our confidence in him, Yisrael. We cannot allow our flesh to tarnish our confidence in Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. Verse 16, he also said, he also shall be my Yasha, my salvation. He said, for a hypocrite, one that does not walk upright, visually, it seems that he's doing what is called of Almighty Yahweh, but he does not walk according to the Torah. For a hypocrite shall not come before Almighty Yahweh. Did you hear that, Israel? We cannot be false and believe that we stand in the presence of Almighty Yahweh as a hypocrite, bringing our offerings of praise into the house of Abba, Abba Yahweh, but yet knowing that we're not walking in his mishpah and in his Torah, Israel. He said that a hypocrite we cannot stand, will not stand up before him. Hallelujah. Let us move on to, to Tehillim. And I'm going to close into, in Tehillim tonight. Tehillim chapter 18, verse 22, I want to begin reading. The Psalms of Dawi.
Let's move to verse 21, to Helium chapter 18, verse 21. He says, For I have kept the ways of Almighty Yahweh. I have walked in his Torah, his Mishvah, his commandments, and have not wickedly departed from my sovereign ruler. Do we find ourselves departing Israel? Do we move away? We shy away from Almighty Yahweh. Just like Adam and his Isha, E, they shied away from the presence of Almighty Yahweh to hide themselves. He says, for all his judgments, they were before me. And I did not put away his statues from before me. He said, I was also upright before him and kept myself from my iniquities. Verse 24. He says, therefore, as Yahweh recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands in his eyesight. Verse 25. Yet with his high seed, you will show yourself merciful. And with upright, strong, valiant man, you will show yourself upright. That's what Yahweh does, Israel. He said, with the poor, you will show, with the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the forward, do you show yourself forward? Verse 27. He said, for you will save the afflicted people. Are we not afflicted, Israel? But will bring down high looks. For you will light my candle. Yahweh my Abba will enlighten my darkness. So we need a darkness enlightened by Almighty Yahweh Israel, to light our candlestick. Verse 29. For by you have I run through a troop. And by you, Yahweh, my Abba, have I leaped over a wall. Then it seems like things try to slow us down, Yisrael, and hinder us. But through Yahweh Almighty, we put our batak in him. He gives us the power to run through any army. To overcome any circumstance. Yes. Yes. And he says to leap or to overcome any high wall, Yisrael. Yes. Verse 30. As for Yahweh Almighty, his way is perfect. Yes. And the word of Yahweh, it is tried. It has been pr- tried. It has been tested. That we say he is a buckler to those that put their bata, yes. their trust yes. in him. He upholds us. Here's our buckler that holds the Torah close by Israel. Here's our strength. Verse 31. For who, for who is the Almighty One that has saved or that saved Yahweh? Or who is the rock that has saved Yahweh or Abba? Who, who is stronger than Him? Who is more powerful than Almighty Yahweh? There is none else, Israel. It is him that keeps us. It is him that has preserved us. It is him that gives us the amuna to continue and to press on. It is him that opens our eyes every morning. It is him that sees us even in our beds when we close our eyes to sleep. Yisrael, it is Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Helium chapter 34, verse 11. It is him, Yisrael, that keeps us. He desires above all things from the house of Yisrael for us to put our trust in him. That's all we have to do is put our trust in him. Yisrael, out of Mizraim, all they had to do is put their trust in him. There would not have been any murmuring, any troubles, any loom, if they would just trust. If we would just trust Israel, Yahweh would bring us even through the wilderness. Hallelujah. Of our trials and of our situations, Israel. To Helium 34 and 11. He says, come you children, hearken to me, and I will teach you the fear of Almighty Yahweh. He said, what man is he that desires life? Who desires life today, tonight, Israel? Those that are listening by via of live stream, don't we desire life? Yeah. Those that are wise, don't we do things to prolong our life? 
even in this physical mean Yisrael, the high of Almighty Yahweh, what man is he that desires life? And Ahava that loves many days. That he may see tough. What man? Don't we all Yisrael? Right, he said we must do this. We must keep our tongues from evil. Did not Eo keep his tongue? Yes, right, y'all, from evil. Yeah. And your lips, our mouths, our feth, from speaking any guy. Yes. That's all it takes, Israel. Right, yeah. Verse 14. He says, depart from evil and do tough. Seek shalom. Do we seek shalom, Israel? Right, yeah? We must seek shalom. The shalom of Almighty Yahweh. And not only that, but once you have seek and you found it, we must pursue it. Verse 14, verse 15. He says that the eyes of Yahweh, they are upon the Sadiq. Are we not righteous, Israel? Yeah. Have not Yahweh deemed us yeah. righteous in this yeah. wicked and perverse generation? Yeah. Sure, it's not by our own righteousness, yeah. but it's by the mercies of Almighty Yahweh yeah. and his righteousness. That he has brought us forth and that he has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light, Israel. Yeah. The eyes of Yahweh are upon the Siddiq, the righteous, and his ears, do we not recall the ears of Almighty Yahweh? Yeah. Are open unto their cry. Yeah. They're not closed, Israel. Yeah. The ears of Almighty Yahweh, it is open unto our cry. Verse 16. It says that the face of Yahweh. He is against them that do evil. Yes, yes. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Only Yahweh can do that, Yisrael. Yeah. He cuts off the remembrance of the wicked. Even the things that we have done, Yisrael. Yeah. The Dhamma Yahshua has washed those things away. He has put our sins as far as the east is from the west, Yisrael. Yeah. Can we measure that? Can that be measured, Yisrael? Verse 17. It says that the Sadiq, the righteous, cry, and Yahweh hears and delivers them out of their troubles. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let us put our trust in Yahweh. Let us put our imuna, our faith. Let us put everything that we have into Almighty Yahweh, into Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 18. He said, Yahweh hears nigh to them that are of a broken Laugh yeah. of a broken heart. Yeah. And he saves such that is of a contrite mm -hmm. ruach, Yisrael. Yeah. Many are the afflictions of the Sadiq. Mm -hmm. Many are of our afflictions, Yisrael. Yeah. But Almighty Yahweh, we should put our trust in him. Mm -hmm. By talking him, Yisrael. Yeah. But Yahweh, he delivers them, him. Out of them all. He delivers us out of them all, Yisrael. Yeah. It did not say he will deliver. It says that he has delivered. We are delivered, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. From this Torah of sin and of death, Yisrael. Yeah. And he keeps all of his bones. He keeps us, Yisrael. Yeah. He keeps us together. All of our bones. It says, none of them is broken. He said, evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the Sadiq shall be desolate. Verse 22. He says, Yahweh, he redeems the nephesh of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. We shall not be empty. We shall not be dried up. We shall not be left without wealth or substance, Yisrael, Yah, but we must put our trust in him. We must bata at Almighty Yahweh. To Helium 37, verse 2, through verse 7, I do want to read tonight, Yisrael, Yah. Let us put our imuna, our bata, our trust, our confidence, not in the arm of flesh, not in the devices of man, but in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. To Helium chapter 37, verse 2. For they shall 
be soon cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in Yahweh and do tough. So shall you dwell in the land, in the ritz, in the property, the possession, the place that Yahweh intends for us to be, Yisrael, in the land. And faithfully, you shall be fed. But we must trust in Yahweh, Yisrael. He shall feed us. He shall nourish us. He shall not allow us to go hungry or to go empty or to be drawn up, Yisrael. Verse 4, he said, delight yourself also in Yahweh, and he shall give you the desires. What do we desire? What are the desires that he is talking about, Yisrael? Is it more wealth? Is it more things? More tangible things? And we have the Ruach HaKodesh, Yahshua HaMashiach, those are the things that we desire, that we put our trust in, that we want. Hallelujah. He shall give you the desires of your nephesh, more wisdom. More hava. Yes, yes, yes. Those are things we should ask of Israel. More imuna. More ability to put our, bata, our trust in him. He said, commit your ways to Yahweh. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass, Israel. Yes, and he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. Mm-hmm. Don't you see as the light in the morning how it ebbs? It just don't come on like that. And then it's bright and it's daytime. But if you get up and you watch the sun as it comes to the horizon, the beautiful colors, you see the progression of the sun until it reaches full potential or the full full brightness, Yisra'ya. That is what the light of Yahshua should do in our lives, Yisra'ya. He brings forth our righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Verse 7, he says, rest in Yahweh. Put your confidence in him, Yisrael. Everything is all right. Rest in Yahweh and wait patiently for him. Don't you know in our yes. patience and our waiting, we possess our nephew Yisrael. Yes. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Yes. We should not fret because of the wicked devices, Israel. But we should put our batak, our trust, in Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let us continue, verse 35 to verse 40. He said, I have seen the wicked and great traditional power, great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passes away, and lo, he was not. Yes, I sought him, but he could not be found. He says, it commands us, Yisrael, in verse 37, to mark the perfect man. Have we marked the perfect man? Have we marked Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael? Can we point him out in our nephesh, in our lives? He said, mark the perfect man. And behold the upright, for the end of that man is shalom. But we must put our trust in Almighty Yahweh. He says, but the transgressors shall be destroyed altogether. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the Yahshua, the salvation of the righteous, of the Siddiq, is of Almighty Yahweh. He is our strength in time of trouble. And Yahweh, he shall help them. He shall help us and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because, what? They put their trust in him. Hallelujah. So let us put our trust in Yahweh tonight, Israel. No matter what comes our way, no matter how high the waves sink, no matter how high the mountain a load of valleys sing that we cannot overcome or endure, Yisrael. Let us put our, our trust in Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let us move on. A few more scriptures, Yahweh, tonight in the Torah. Hallelujah. To Helium chapter 62, verse 1. Do we have the patience to wait upon Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? 
What gives us the ability or the fortitude to endure or to wait patiently? It is the trust that we have. It is the confidence that we have in Almighty Yahweh. It's us committing even our very nashfish in his hands, our being, our souls into his hands, Yisrael Yah. To hear them 62 and 6 and 5. He said, my soul waits on you only, Almighty Yahweh. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He says, here's my defense. I shall not be moved. But you know, when our defense, when our trust is, not, is in Almighty Yahweh, there's nothing can move us, Israel. Yah. Not our emotions, not our pains, shall move us from the strength, the promises of Almighty Yahweh. He said, and Yahweh is my salvation and my splendor, the rock of my strength and my refuge yes, yes. is an Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Trust in Yahweh. Trust in Him. Sometimes, you people, it says what? All times? All times? Yeah. Does he mean all times? Yeah. Most of the time? 99.9% of the time? All times. all times. He said, I trust in him at all times, you people. He says, pour out your nephews, your left before Yahweh. Yahweh, he is a refuge for us, Shalah. Surely men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree, they are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are all together lighter than even vanity, Israel. Lighter than even vanity. They have no substance, no wealth, Israel. Moving on to Helium chapter 64, verse 1. Again, we're talking about putting our batak, our trust in Almighty Yahweh, and not in flesh, not in idols, not in the gods, but in Almighty Yahweh. To Helium 64, verse 1. Dawid, he says here, Hear my voice, O Yahweh, in my prayer. He says, preserve me, preserve my life from fear of my enemies. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows even as bitter words. They that may shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. That's what the wicked does, Israel. They encourage themselves. They commune of lying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? But you know that even uh, speaks about the wicked things and the secret things in our own lives, Israel. Yes, yes. That battle. And that shoot their spears even at the Torah, at the life of the Mishra in our lives, Israel. Verse 7, but Yahweh shall shoot at them with an arrow, with his arrow, and suddenly they shall be wounded. They shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all the sons of Adam shall fear and shall declare the works of Almighty Yahweh, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in Yahweh. Are we glad tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Are we happy in Yahweh? Are we content in what he is doing tonight, Yisrael? Yeah. He said, and shall Batak shall trust in him. And all the upright in love shall hallelujah. Yahweh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are we upright in love tonight, Yisrael? Yeah. So let us barak Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us give toda unto Yah. Hallelujah. Let us lift up the name of our body, Yahweh, in all things. Hallelujah. In everything, Israel. 
Hallelujah. For it is through Almighty Yahweh that we care. We are care. We put our trust in him, Israel. Not in the strength of man. Not in the rulership of the countries or the nations of the world. But under the rulership of Yahshua HaMashiach. Under the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Shall we conduct ourselves, Israel, as we press on, as we move forward in the will and in this straight and narrow path into the kingdom. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Told the Yah. Yahweh is tough and his mercy endures forever, Israel. Hallelujah. Let me read these last verses before I close tonight. I pray this be an inspiration to you, Israel. Yeah. That even through everything that we go through, that we experience, that we endure, that we battle, that we put our trust in Yahweh. Because it is even Him that brings forth the trial. It is, it, it is Him that sets the wall in place, Israel. Yeah. But it's also through Him and through Yahshua HaMashiach, He gives us a way of deliverance. Why must he do this continually, Israel? Why do we encounter these things as we live day by day? It's to draw us closer to him, not to move us away. It's to make us stronger, Israel, that we may endure the battle that is still yet at hand, Israel, and that we may come through victorious with Teshua and Yahshua HaMashiach. Tehillim chapter 119, verse 40 through verse 44 that bring us to a close tonight. 119, 40 through verse 44. That we here expresses before Almighty Yahweh as we should do at all times, Israel. He said, Behold, I have longed after your precepts, your ways. We have looked at our ways and trying to line things up long enough, Israel, on our own. We should look to the precepts of Almighty Yahweh. He says, quicken me in your righteousness, in your sadiq. We must understand that our own righteousness, what we deem as righteousness, is filthy. It's as a ministered bloody rag of a woman before Almighty Yahweh. It is worthless. It is vanity. It is vain, Israel. Verse 41. He said, let your mercies, Almighty Yahweh, come also unto me. We need the mercies of Almighty Yahweh tonight. We need him to continually be patient with us and a harbor us. Oh, Yahweh, even your salvation according to your word, to what you have spoken. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me. For I, by talk, I trust. I depend on you. You are my lifeline. I don't rely on my own intellect, my own understanding, Almighty Yahweh, for I trust in your word, your Torah. Your mitzvah. And take not the word of truth yeah. utterly out of my mouth, Almighty Yahweh. We should pray this, Israel, that Yahweh not take his Torah out of our mouth. Hallelujah. What are the issues of life proceed out of? Of the mouth? It comes from what? The left. Yeah. Yahweh, he has written the Torah. He has done a new thing. He has written his mitzvah, his Torah, in our lives, Israel. So that way he said, take not, he says, take not the Torah, the truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in your judgments. I put my trust in your judgments. And the last verse tonight, Israel, he says, so shall I keep your Torah continually, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let that be our cry, Israel. That Yahweh continues to lead us. He continues to strengthen us and to teach us Yisrael as we put our trust in him. 
by top. Everything, we lay it all on the line, Yisraeli. No, this is not like gambling in the world. We know what the outcome is. It's a thousand percent. It is greater than that. It is a sure thing, Israel. If we put our Batak in Almighty Yahweh and in Yahshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful, Israel? Put our trust in him and everything will be all right. When that inner man speaks unto you, that hidden man of the left, just impel him. Go ahead and impel him. And both talk, trust in Almighty Yahweh. For it's him that has brought us this far. It's not ourselves. It's by the mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Even when we didn't have the knowledge of him, he knew us. And he kept us. Do we not still have breath in our bodies? Hallelujah. And he has still get given us space of time to get it right. Hallelujah. And to make pull out unto him, Yisrael. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Even you that are listening by via live stream, stand to your feet tonight. Hallelujah. You're in the tabernacle in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Where two or three are gathered, is he not in the midst, Yisrael? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us turn unto Yerushalayim. Lift up our hands before Almighty Yahweh. Abba Yahweh, we told you for this occasion, for this time. You have given us, Abba Yahweh, to share the Torah, your mitzvah, unto the house of Israel. We do pray tonight, Abba Yahweh, for the conditions that are scattered, your people, throughout the Olam, those that are listening by via live stream, those that do not have the means to listen, those that may not have even heard of Test your community. We pray for those, Abba Yahweh. For there are yours that are scattered throughout every nation, throughout every corner, every spear, every place throughout the world, Abba Yahweh. So we pray for the house of Israel tonight. That you will bring us, Abba Yahweh, together. That we may be Ekar, one, in you and in Yahshua HaMashiach. We do pray, Abba Yahweh, those that have traveled from near and far, you will take them home safely, Abba Yahweh. And that you will give your beloved rest on this night, Abba Yahweh. And as we sleep in the reassurance and in confidence and having our batak, our trust in you, Almighty Yahweh, we do told at you and we barak you for all things and for everything in the precious, mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah.